When you paint with watercolour, one technique that you need to learn is how to soften your paint edges. Some beginner painters have difficulty with this. So today I'm going to give you some tips that will help you gain control of this technique. And I'll also show you a few different ways to create soft edges. Edges are a really important element of a painting. They can be hard and defined. I'm painting on dry paper here. They can be jagged and broken. Here I'm using the side of my brush on dry paper. And they can be soft and lost. Here I'll wet the paper with some water before I put the paint on. The water on the paper moves the pigment creating those soft or lost edges. We can use those edges in our paintings to direct the viewer's attention to various parts of the painting. We can put hard and soft edges together to create contrast in our paintings. We can create distance with soft edges and we can bring things forward or closer to us when we use hard edges. I have another video about edges, so have a look at that one as well as this one. In this video, I'm going to focus on soft edges and how to achieve them. And there are a number of ways that I paint them. The first is to paint them on wet or damp paper, just like you saw me do. The wetness of the paper will determine the softness of the edge and how far the paint spreads. The wetter the paper, the further the paint will spread. I'll wet a strip of this watercolour paper with some water. This is a piece of Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper. This is the other side of that daffodil study that I didn't complete last week. Now I'll put some paint on there and because it's quite wet the paint will spread a fair way. I'll speed it up so you can see how far it spreads. I've waited about three or four minutes and now I'll drop some more paint on. The paper is still wet but it's not as wet as it was so the paint won't spread as far. You can see on the first mark that I've made I've got soft edges all the way around the perimeter of it and the same with this mark. It hasn't spread as far but I've still got those soft edges around the outside. I've waited another few minutes. The paper is still damp, but nowhere near as wet as it was when I put that first mark on there. And again, I've got soft paint edges around the outside edge of my mark, but the paint is sitting in one spot. It's not spreading as far as the other two marks. So when I paint and I want soft edges on my paint marks, I have to determine whether I want the paint to spread a lot or do I want it to sit more or less where I put it on the paper. If I want a really soft or lost edge that spreads, I'll paint on paper that's quite wet. On the front of this little bird here, I painted these marks on his chest on paper that was wet with water. I think you can see the water on the paper there. This is yellow that I'm painting onto the wet paper. Then I've got some black on my brush now and I'm going to start to add some little speckly marks onto the wet paper. I'm just touching my brush to the paper and you can see how far that paint spreads. All I have to do is dab the tip of the brush on the paper and it flares out and drifts away from the brush. So the water on the paper is moving the pigment around more than my brush is. I did the same thing here on this pale rosella. I painted these marks on the head on wet paper. I've just wet this area here with water and now I've got some olive green paint. I'm dabbing that onto the wet paper. And that water on the paper moves the pigment, creates those soft edges. I don't really have to do anything, all I have to do is dab the paint on there. Here I'm pulling some of that paint onto the dry paper 
which is giving me a hard edge at the bottom of that mark. But up the top here I've got that soft edge that I'm looking for. Onto that, while it's wet, I'll drop another colour. And that's also giving me soft edges because the paper's wet. Down here I'll paint some water on and I want to do the same thing. Here I'll use some violet instead of the green. And now I've got a bit of burnt umber. Just dab it onto the wet paper. On this rosella that I just showed you, I painted that first layer of yellow on the head. I let that dry and then I re-wet it with water to put the other colours on. I can also achieve these soft edges if I put wet paint on top of wet paint, like I did here on this goldfish. I'm painting this yellow paint on dry paper, but before it dries, I'll put another colour over the top. So that's all filled in. The paint's still wet. Now I'll go and get my other colour. This is orange. I paint that onto the yellow while it's wet. Because both colours are wet, that gives me all those soft edges. By the time I'd finished, I had a combination of hard and soft edges through the painting. Sometimes, instead of putting layers of paint on top of each other, I might put one colour next to another colour that's still wet and the edge where the two colours touch becomes soft. I'll show you what I mean here on this scrap piece of paper. That's some yellow, so I'll get another colour now while it's wet. Instead of painting it on top of that yellow, I'll paint it beside the yellow. Just here. And then where the two colours meet, I get a soft edge where they're blending into one another. I did that on this frog here that you might remember that I painted from last year. I'm just finishing up painting some green paint on this leg. Then I'm going to put some orange onto the toes and where the toes touch the green, the orange and green will blend together to create a soft edge. So here's the orange. When I touch the green, I'll get that soft edge that I'm looking for. Then if I'm quick enough, before that green paint dries, I can do the same thing with this blue paint. I run it along the edge there, and when it touches the green paint, the two colours bleed into one another and it gives me that soft edge there. Now just here I'm going to soften an edge with my brush where the blue finishes on the white paper. I can take my damp brush and soften that paint edge. This is the technique that I mentioned at the start of the video that takes some practice. I'm going to demonstrate this more closely later in this video. If I want a gentle fuzzy mark that doesn't spread too far and sits more or less in the spot where I put my brush down, I'll paint on paper that's damp. So I'll put my water on the paper like I always do and then I'll wait a little while until I see the sheen on the paper starts to diminish, like you saw me do earlier on those three blue marks that I made. I waited for the paper to dry a little. For example, these marks here on this orchid painting were painted on damp paper that was starting to dry. So I wet my paper. I waited a little while until the sheen was starting to go away. It's still wet, 
but it's nowhere near as wet as what it was when I first wet it. Now I can paint this paint over the top of my pencil lines and it more or less stays where I put it over the pencil line but you can see it's giving me those really soft fuzzy edges that I want. Just here I've put the paint on but the paper's a bit wet just there so I'm going to dab that with my tissue and see if I can do it again. The paper will get to the point where it's too dry for me to paint on and it won't give me those soft fuzzy edges. So when I get to that stage, I have to wait till it dries completely. Then I re-wet it again and then I wait for the sheen to go off the surface and off I go again on the damp paper. Here, in contrast, the paper is quite wet. So when I put the paint on there, it's going to spread further. So as you paint, you always need to be aware of how wet your paper is. Sometimes when you put paint on wet paper, the paint will spread too far and it'll go where you don't want it to go. To fix that, I use my brush like it's a sponge to tidy things up. I'll show you what I mean here. I'll wet the paper with water first, the same way I always do. And I'll put some paint on the paper. Now if you can imagine that that paint has spread further than I want it to, all I have to do is take the paint out of my brush and use my damp brush like a sponge to sop up some of that paint. I flatten the bristles and use it like a sponge. So I wipe over the paint, it sops up some of that paint. I've still got a soft paint edge. I'm not ruining my soft paint edge by doing this. Because there's water on the paper, while it's wet, it's still going to drift a little. But now I'm just sopping up some of the excess paint, taking it away from where I don't want it to be. I keep washing my brush in my water jar and dabbing it on a cloth so that my brush is clean each time I touch the paper with it. Another way I can achieve soft edges is to paint on dry paper and then quickly use my brush to soften the edge of the paint. This is the technique that I mentioned at the start of the video where some beginners might struggle. So I'll show you how I do that and I'll also show you what can go wrong. Okay, I'll make a mark on my paper. This is dry paper I'm using and French ultramarine blue. Now I take the paint out of my brush and I dab my brush on a cloth. What I have to be careful of is that I don't take too much water off my brush. I want the brush to be damp. I want it to be a similar wetness to the paint that's on the paper. So I have to keep washing the paint out of my brush so that my brush is clean. And then I have another go. Sometimes I don't have to put it in the water. Sometimes I can just wipe it on the cloth. I just keep softening the edge, getting it the way I want it. Sometimes I can do this in one stroke. Other times I've got to go back over it a couple of times. I'll do it again so you can see. I make the mark and I have to work fairly quickly. I can't wait until this paint starts to dry. I wash the paint out of my brush again and I dab it on the cloth. But not too much. It's got to match or be a similar wetness to the paint that's on the paper. I wipe it over the edge that I want to soften. So I clean my brush take off the excess moisture and have another go at cleaning it up. So as I said, sometimes all that's needed is a quick dab on the cloth to get the excess paint off. As long as my brush is similar wetness to the paint that's on the paper, I should be okay. And this is something that becomes intuitive. You do it without thinking about it. So you just need lots and lots of practice doing it.
Now I'll show you what can go wrong. So I'll make a mark again. This time I'm going to wash the paint out of my brush, but I'm not going to take the excess moisture off. So my brush is clean. And then instead of taking the moisture out of it, the excess moisture out of it, I go straight in with a wet brush. What that does is it'll create a watercolour bloom. It will also make the paint rush into that extra water that you've put on the paper. And then you end up in all sorts of a mess. So you need to make sure that you dab off the excess moisture. I can clean that up now. All is not lost if I use my brush like a sponge again. This is the same thing I did earlier in the video, cleaning it up with my brush like it's a sponge. I can clean up that excess moisture there too. I can take a bit of it off with my brush. And then I come back and clean up this area. So you need to make sure your brush is of similar wetness to the paint that's on the paper. That's the key. That comes with practice. The other thing that you could do wrong is you could have your brush too dry. So there's my mark. I take the paint out of my brush. Now I'll dab it on my cloth, but this time I take too much moisture out of it and I make it too dry. So then when I touch my paper with it, the brush is too dry and it's not going to do anything. It's not acting like a sponge anymore. No matter what I do, all I'm doing is making a mess. So I can put moisture back into the brush, dab it off. It's still moist, but not sopping wet. And then I can try again. Do it a few times. I use that technique of softening the edge on dry paper when it's a small area that I'm painting. If it's a larger edge that needs to be soft, I'll usually paint that on wet paper like I showed you earlier. Sometimes I might find that the paper has dried and I forgot to soften an edge. What I do then is come back in with a brush like this or a stiffer bristled brush like this one and I soften the edge after it's dried. This one is a Rosemary & Co eradicator brush, which I love. And this one here is a cheap acrylic and oil painting brush that has got stiffer bristles than my watercolour brushes. These marks here I made are dry now. Now if I wanted a soft edge here and I forgot to soften it when the paint was wet, I can come back with these brushes when they're wet and rub over the top gently. The paper is dry, my brush is wet. I use a tissue to take the paint off. So I rub it gently with a wet brush that dissolves some of the pigment and then I take my tissue and dab at it. This is not something I do often, but it will get me out of trouble if I need it. I'll try this other brush now. This is the Rosemary & Co Eradicator brush. I do the same thing. This brush is a bit softer than that one I was just using. This works best if your paint is not a staining colour. I find if it's a staining colour I can't really do this. The other thing that I can use these brushes for is to clean up watermarks. Sometimes without you realising, the paint will wander out towards the end of your waterline and it makes that mark that you can see here. These little brushes are good for cleaning up that area. So the brush is wet, the paper is dry and again I use my tissue to take off the excess paint. <laughs> 
and it gets rid of that water line that sometimes creeps up on you without you realising. These brushes are really handy for softening edges that have dried and also for lifting highlights after the paint has dried. They're also good for fixing mistakes and I use them all the time. I use them here on this little owl painting that I did recently. Here I'm using the Rosemary & Co Eradicator brush to bring out the legs some more. I've lost them. The paint's drifted onto them further than I wanted it to. So my paper's dry, my little brush is wet, and then again I use my tissue to take off the excess paint. I gently rub over it. I don't want to damage the paper, so I'm very gentle. And then I use the tissue to dab it off. So if the paint has drifted on to an area where I didn't really want it, this helps me to clean it up. It's best to get good paper when you use those brushes, especially the stiffer ones, because you can damage your paper if it's very fragile. I use ash paper most of the time, and I find that it's pretty tough. I hope this video was helpful to you. As always, a like is appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next week with a new video. So when I paint and I want soft edges on my paint marks, I have to determine whether I want the paint to spread a lot or do I want it to sit more or less. More or less. Yeah. So when I paint and I want soft edges on my paint marks, I have to determine whether I want this, this paint to spread a lot. paint to spread a lot. Or do I want it to sit more or less where I put it? If I want a really soft or lost edge that spreads on the paper, I'll paint on paper that's quite wet. On the front of this little willy wagtail, for, for example, if I want a gentle fuzzy mark that doesn't spread too far and sits more or less where I put my brush down, they're also good for fixing mistakes and I use them all the time. I. Uh,